Welcome to this candidate interview for the 2020 GSA elections. The GSA is the primary representative body for postgraduate students at the University of York and is run by students for students. Joining me for this interview is Emily, who's running for the position of Vice President Academic. Emily, would you like to introduce yourself and say why you are running? Um, hi, I'm Emily. I'm running for Vice President Academic. Um, and I'm running because I want to make sure that the voices of students are being heard by the university, um, particularly in the face of sort of current events in the world. Um, I want to make sure that student feedback is being heard. I want to improve communication between the university and postgraduate students. Um, and I want to improve the course rep system and I want to help long distance learners. Thanks. So to start with, what do you think is the biggest academic issue facing postgrads at York and how do you intend to combat it? Um, well, I think it's kind of just the current situation in the world, to be honest, um, and the fact that we don't know um, how long the repercussions of this will be. We don't even know if um, we'll be having in-person learning in September. We don't really know what the situation is going to look like. Um, and I think the biggest way we have to combat this is um, firstly just by we need to have student input in all the decisions the university is making. Um, and we need to be taking student feedback about the decisions they're making because obviously this is an unprecedented situation and no one's you know made these kind of decisions before so i think there needs to be room for things to change based on student feedback um, and also we need the university to be very open about their communication um, in terms of making sure that people are aware of why they're making decisions and the reasoning behind it because i think that helps everyone feel um less less stressed but also just hearing the reasoning makes people understand better um, and I also think we really need to be building our online community as much as possible um, because obviously one of the things we're all dealing with um, is just working from home and working long distance and it's new for a lot of us. And I think we've got the opportunity to really um, support each other through this and I think that's something the GSA can really help with. So you talked a lot about the decision making process and, and the fact that the university needs to get students involved in all of the decisions it takes. What do you think the university should do? Um, well, I think we need to have representatives, so we need communication, for example, with the GSA, having people, obviously it's not always possible, but to have students in the room sometimes when those decisions are being made, um, listening to student feedback. And I also think um, that once de decisions have been published, if they're getting things, um, like we've seen where lots of students are um, contacting the university or publishing um, signed letters um, with their feedback um, we need the university to be taking that into account um, or if they can't letting us know why um, and I just think the GSA is, is a, a way that we can um, sort of collate all that student feedback and bring that to the university and also a way the university can use to um, explain to students you know how they've responded to student feedback or where it's not possible um, but it's just a point where we can really um, lift up people's experiences and make sure that everyone's being heard. Okay, uh, what, what experience do you have that could help you in this role? Um, I was on the committee for the Beat Society at the University of Birmingham um, in the second year of us running it. So we worked a lot with the big charity and we had a lot of in-person meetings with people from the charity. So I've got experience working with large organisations. Um, we ran some really big campaigns. Um, I also experience um, with working with a university and working with um, student guilds. Um, apart from that, I also volunteered um, during my university degree at Birmingham um, to help with dissertation training for second years. So I've done lectures to big groups of students. I've done writing blog posts for the university. So I've got quite a lot of experience communicating to students. Um, and I've also worked um, as a um, team leader in a cafe full time whilst volunteering in a primary school on my days off. So I'm used to being busy and I'm also really good at taking feedback from people um, and explaining to them where we can and where we can't deal with that feedback um, so I'm quite good at communicating with people about things. Thanks. How do you intend to ensure that you represent all students from different courses, from different faculties and from different levels of study? Um, I think the biggest thing is the course prep system because I think it's amazing that we have this course prep system um, and how wide ranging it is but I do think that currently it's not uniform across all degrees in terms of who's hearing from their course reps. I've heard from several students across different degree courses that they've heard from their course rep once in the year. Um, so I want to make sure that everyone is hearing from the person representing them. 
Um, and I also think it's just a case of listening to everyone and actively reaching out on platforms like Facebook um, to make sure that we're listening to what people are saying and um, responding to emails, just things like that, just listening to everyone's experiences because no representative is going to be able to know the experiences of everyone. Um, so we have to get to listen to them. So you talk about the, the course rep system there and, and the fact that you want to improve it. How would you do that? What specific things do you think either need to be changed or done differently? Um, I think, for example, we need a system where there are set times where the course reps have to be communicating with their students. Um, for example, just saying to them, once a month, you need to uh, put out the feedback. Um, and then just checking in that they've done that. I know it's run slightly differently depending on the departments, but I think it's not so large that it's unmanageable for us to be um, communicating with them and checking in that they are communicating. Um, so I don't think it needs a complete overhaul. I just think that we need to be monitoring it more closely to ensure that everyone is reaching out um, and communicating. And I also think um, we need to be communicating with departments more and reminding them that the course rep system is there and they should be using it because I also know some departments don't um, check with their course rep as often as they maybe should or as, um, or will do it late after they've been reminded to by the course rep. So I think even just you know sending out emails and reminding people is important. What is your opinion on hidden costs in postgraduate study? Um, I think some of them can be overcome um, in terms of things like printing costs um, and costs of books. I think some of these, um, we have the resources in the university to overcome them. For example, like the library will buy a lot of books and I think we need to make sure that everyone is aware of the resources available to them um, in terms of that. Um, in terms of things like printing, I think we need to be minimising what people are expected to do. I mean, I know a lot of departments have moved to entirely online submissions so people aren't needing to print out ridiculous piles of things, but I think that's something we should really sure. Um, and I also think we need to, again, just be listening to people and if they're raising hidden costs that we're not aware of, we need to be drawing attention to that and trying to find ways to mitigate those costs because there shouldn't really be loads of hidden costs for people. Thank you. Graduate teaching assistants are represented both by the GSA and also by UCU. How will you work together and what will your priorities be for GTAs? Um, I think in terms of working with the UCU, the biggest thing is making sure that the university um, achieves its commitment to moving GTAs onto contracts because I know that with the sort of huge financial pressure that universities are likely to be facing. I want to make sure that's not something that the university drops um, in the face of the current issues. And I think that's something where working with the UCU is going to be really important. Um, and in terms of supporting them, aside from that, I think we need a better community at York, which I think is something that the GCA and the GSA can work better on. Um, I don't know if there are any online networks, but I haven't had to find any in terms of um, just like Facebook groups and stuff for people to communicate and get support um, so I don't think they're very visible because I personally have found them very difficult to find and um, so I think we need more sort of um, I mean possibly in-person events depending on how things go in the world but I think we need to make sure that there's um, they can get support from each other as well. Now international students uh, it's, it's well known that they pay significantly higher fees than home and currently EU students how would you improve the situation with regards to the benefits they get from the university for those fees? Um, I think part of this is an um, a national issue and I think we need to be working with national networks um, on this because things like obviously some of the restrictions of the tier 4 visa regulations are national, it's not just your, we can't do it on our own, so I think we need to work um, together and I do think this is a good time to be pushing that because I think again universities really want international students to come next year and are really afraid that they won't so I think it's a good time to push for more and then again I think we need to be communicating with our international students in terms of what specifically um, they would like to see if there's anything that could be done immediately they think that could change their experience um, I think we just need to be raising those voices um, but again just working with national networks to try and change things on a wider scale. Thanks. And what will you do to make sure the academic needs of distance learners are catered for? Um, I think one of the things, obviously a lot has moved online recently, and I think we need to work with the university to try and keep as much as we can 
available after all this is over and we've seen that it is possible to put all these resources online so obviously not all of it is under our control some of them are national organizations providing these things but some of it we should be able to keep and also i think the uh, events um, and like for example online study sessions people have been holding via zoom i think we should be trying to put on some of these things for long distance learners after this is all over um, because I think we've shown that we can make a community online and I think that's really important for long distance learners is not feeling part of the community and not getting that support and I think that's something we need to keep working for. Thanks. So a slightly different question here. What one thing would you change about the University of York and why? Um, I think I would change how the university communicates with its students because I think a lot of us have had frustration. Um, I think lack of open communication about decisions it makes and the times when they release communication and the time it takes them to communicate has been the biggest frustration for people during all of this um, but also in terms of um, I know people have had trouble with the strikes where the university is telling them don't worry we've mitigated this but don't give details I think a lot of the time if there was better communication people wouldn't be as frustrated and wouldn't feel like they're not being listened to even if that communication is just we're sorry we couldn't do this this is why i just think that communication is what needs time okay thanks so i've got a few questions that relates more specifically to your manifesto and the first of those is that you state that you want students to have greater say in program design what does that look like in practice sorry i don't think that is in my manifesto In which case, I'll, I'll give you the chance to answer it anyway. Okay. If, if students um, could have a greater say in program design, what do you think it should look like? Um, I think it should look like, I think we need to be, I mean, we already are taking feedback from students about their, um, or most courses are about how they felt modules are or in terms of individual teachers. I think we should be taking um, general feedback on the degree as a whole so that students can explain what they like and what they don't like. Um, I think in terms of this, for example, um, some departments have changed dissertations recently because of this whole crisis. I think they should be communicating with students before they do this, um, even just to do a snap poll and see whether people are agreeing with it or not. Um, I don't think we should be changing um, degree programmes without checking because people obviously have paid for these degrees and signed up for these degrees thinking they're going to be one thing and obviously you can't blame people for changing them under this current situation but i do think we need to be um communicating i think we can just do that by do it just by emailing a lot of these courses are small enough that departments can simply send out an email um in other cases we have the facilities to do questionnaires online that um but i just think it's all about just being open to feedback from students um listening um, to what they have to say. So picking on, up on that point about feedback, how will you ensure that student feedback is effectively collected and then acted upon? Um, so obviously I want to use the course rep system as much as possible um, and make sure we're listening, we're monitoring the kind of feedback that's coming in from the course rep system. Um, but also I think there's space to use these on networks like Facebook. I mean, we've seen um, over the past couple of months, we've seen people put together lists of personal statements um, and, and petitions and signed letters. And there's no reason why we couldn't put out things asking for personal statements from people or also why we can't um, take those statements that already exist and raise those up. So I think partly it's that. Um, I think partly just sending out regular communication to people via email and via the website, just making it clear that if people want to send in things, they're getting listened to. Okay, thanks. Now, how would you assess the current strengths and weaknesses of the online resources offered by the university, obviously, which have taken on greater importance over the last few weeks and months? Um, I know I keep going on about I think part of it is um, serving people to see what they think um, because I think the problem is is that it's not uniform across all departments some departments are fine with their online resources and some departments are really struggling and obviously no one person is going to know how the situation is across all departments so I think part of it is um, communicating and finding out how everyone else is doing um, I think part of it is um, making sure that the academic side 
um, we need to discuss with departments their needs. Um, for example, um, departments, sorry, I've completely lost my train of thought there. Um, for example, departments um, will know the kind of resources that their students need and whether those are available online. Um, and I think also working with the library in terms of they should they will have a better idea of where gaps are what things aren't available online um and then mitigating that's whether that's changing marking criteria so that it's not relying on resources that don't exist um or whether it's finding a way to make something else available so in addition to online resources what more do you think the university needs to do in terms of online facilitation for teaching and learning and especially in terms of delivery um, I think we need greater, um, we, we need more face-to-face -face meetings with tutors, I think. Um, I think it's a lot harder when you can't go into office hours or you can't communicate in person with tutors and the original amounts of face-to-face -face contact you might have. I think there needs to be, there needs to be an opportunity for more of that via Zoom. Um, currently, I know it's very difficult for a lot of people to have any face-to-face -face time with their tutors outside of maybe one or two hours that were previously scheduled so I think there needs to be an opportunity for that kind of system um, and I think we also need to set up um, more of the kind of um, online study groups um, whether it's just like zoom writing sessions um, or things like that in terms of making sure that people feel like they're still part of a community and they're not on their own completely divorced from the university when they're doing their work Thanks. So I've got one more question and then I'll give you a chance to conclude. And this one question is, in one sentence, why should people vote for you? Um, because I will make sure that your voices are heard by the university. Excellent. And it was indeed in one sentence. So over to you. This is your chance to add anything else about what you stand for, why you're running and what you want to achieve. Um, I'm really just running because I want to make sure that everyone is being listened to. Um, I think it came from a place of frustration in that I think a lot of us felt like we weren't being heard and our academic needs weren't being met. Um, but it's become more driven from a place of we've seen the amazing community that exists within the postgraduate um, community. We've seen how many people are passionate and willing to come forward and speak about what they need and I really want the opportunity to make sure that you are being listened to and that all of these voices are being raised up and are being heard. Emily, thank you very much.